Welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Turn the Page, the official podcast of Syosset Public Library. I'm Jen, your host today, and I'm here with the writer of two absolutely lovely children's books. Could I ask you to introduce yourself and your book, please? Hello, Jen. It's nice to be here. My name is Sydney Joshua, and I'm the newly published author of S is for Street Games, an alphabet rhyming book um, that was released in December. Um, it's my second published book. My first published book um, is is titled Dear Mommy's Boss, A Kid's Perspective of the Corporate Workplace. Mm. And that's actually an adult fiction satire. But oh yeah, yes, yeah, I'm sorry. yes, yeah. But <laughs> yeah. um so those are my two recent pieces of work oh great yeah you know what I did mistakenly say it was a children's book and I think that's just because you actually capture children's voices so well Thank <laughs> you, you know like it feels very authentic Thank you. um before we get into the books specifically I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about um your journey toward writing um like you know what uh what you do for a living and what drew you to uh writing these books okay so Right now, I'm a, a New York City teacher. I teach second grade, you know, so I'm in elementary education. And it's actually a second career for me. I spent my first, uh, you know, many 12 years or so um, in corporate. And going back to that time, almost almost two, te- two decades ago, mm. I worked in such a great environment you know, when you think of Wall Street and the stock exchange and, you know, finance, and you don't often think of um, warm and fuzzy, you know, bosses, (laughs) (laughs) you know, and when I was transitioning away from the corporate world to education, I thought, oh, this is, I'm never going to have this again. This is, we were so productive. We were such a family. Mm -hmm. Um, It was only due to the retirement of the the partners why I decided to make a transition, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I could have stayed on for the the new owners of the company, but I chose not to. Um, But it's, I thought, you know, this is such a great environment. We've all been here for a long time. So many accolades in the business world. But that really only happens when all the pieces fit together nicely. And my departure, I just don't want to say, you know, thanks for having me for 12 years. (laughs) I wanted to kind of write them a letter, right? And thank them. And it's with that mindset. um, That's how Dear Mommy's Boss came about. So it came about as a thank you to my corporate um, bosses for creating a safe and nurturing and happy um, place to be Mm. um, where being efficient and um, productive was always the case because of the um, accommodations that were put in place for very good, you know, staff and employees you know Mm. people wanted to always give an extra you know 100 percent when you're getting that back so Mm. dear mommy's boss came about by thanking my prior bosses for such a great workplace and hopefully it would influence other people in hr and other corporations to have that same mindset Mm. Yeah, I love that, you know, and I it's it occurred to me that so often we talk about uh, family and work as totally separate things. And that is so rarely the case, not only because like, you know, our family lives and our work lives mm-hmm. always kind of, mm-hmm. you know, become intertwined, mm-hmm. but also like your work 
family is another family, yes. you know, like yes. you and like, it could be dysfunctional or it could be yes. functional. And that's something to like celebrate yes. when it really works. <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. That's that. That's how I felt. So it's so that year, let's going back 20 years, right? I wrote them by hand. Thank you letters to each of the bosses. And then thought, oh, maybe this can um, be put into something more formal so that the message can be spread to other um, industries. Mm. I love it. Like I love the form it takes as a, a collection of letters yeah. from children. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to know if you could um, talk a little bit about... Um, where the children's voices come from because you capture their voices so well and i want to know like you know did you uh like talk, well you're, you're a teacher now so you yes. talk to children a lot right. <laughs> but how did you shape their voices so almost all if i remember correctly of the names are real people they were real children oh. that i knew right so and then I, so I thought about real children that I see in the neighborhood or a little cousin or something, you know, or, or my, my uh, co-workers, kids, a lot of them, are their, their children's names, mm, nice. um, a lot, most of them are their co-workers, children's names. So I thought about who are the children going to be? It's going to be their children. And what would they be thanking the boss for. So mm -hmm. they'd be thanking the boss for telling mommy she could take the earlier train so she does not leave for the concert, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What else would be they be thanking the boss for? They'd be thanking the boss for, um, you know, just having grace when it comes to being maybe 15 minutes late because someone didn't remember to, give somebody lunch or trip money you know what I mean oh yeah today's the trip <laughs> yep. I have to stop at the bank and give you trip money mm -hmm. <laughs> so it came from that place of grace and that it's a lot of times people claim to have emergencies and but they're not real People make up fictitious, real, fictitious emergencies. And when you are acting in good faith and have a good sense of reality, it people have, a, the environment is calmer mm. and things get done. You know, nobody's missing deadlines. Nobody's, <laughs> you know, turning into a pumpkin. There are emergencies. But very often, it's a quarter of what people think. Yes. There's not really 15 emergencies. Mm -hmm. There's like two. You know what <laughs> I mean? Yeah. A hundred percent. Right. Mm -hmm. So it came from that place of literally, I know people in other work, you know, I was on the train and I realized I forgot to leave this just trip money and his lunch. So I just got off the train and called out sick, mm -hmm. right? So the, the choice to just called out sick. But in my work environment, you didn't have to call out sick. Mm -hmm. You could get off the train. You could say, I, I forgot to leave Johnny his trip money and lunch. Like he's going to wake up and there's going to be nothing there. He won't have any money. And I, I'm I'm running 20 minutes late. I have to take a different train. And, and the world went on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it came from a place, by no means am I saying it was haphazard and nothing got done. It, it was exactly the opposite. Mm -hmm. People had held, had a high work ethic. And the same person that called to say, I'm, I'm running, I got to take a different train. Mm -hmm. I, it's the same person now that wouldn't go have lunch, take a lunch, right? It's the same person who yes. would take something home and to make up the 20 minute or what you know what I mean if, if if push came to shove you understand what I'm saying so 
that's the environment that I was in. And I, I tend to be the type of person that appreciates things in the now mm. and not when it's gone. So I thought, okay, I'm transitioning into this new career. I look forward to this new career. I wouldn't be considering this new career if they weren't retiring, but they're retiring and I'm ready. To, then I'll take that as an opportunity to do something else. Mm -hmm. But um, I just think it's, I, I like to appreciate people. And I thought it was important to, this is a message that people should maybe willing to listen to hear, you know, cause you know, not everybody, not everybody really, people wonder why, oh, you know, I have a high turnover rate. Well, why? Yeah. <laughs> why do you have a high <laughs> turnover rate? Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted this to be like, it's it's lighthearted, um, but maybe we'll get people to stop and pause. Yeah, that is so important, you know, because one of the things I really loved about it is that it is about gratitude, yes. you know, and that is one, just a healthy way to approach life, I think. Yes. <laughs> yes. And two, it also kind of in, in being about gratitude, it like, um, illustrates like the good workplace values that yes. contribute to like a healthy and, yes. and uh, supportive work environment. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So it's like funny and it's entertaining, yes. but it also is like full of really good, I think, like directions that like, mm -hmm. you know, companies or any workplace yes. could, could think about. Right. Yeah. Right. And also I suppose be such the, the bond that I had with my, everybody in my work environment was so strong I felt like you know the, the the goodbye party and the we're gonna miss you and let's keep in touch like that was just not enough mm -hmm. I wanted to publicly thank them mm -hmm. I didn't think it was enough mm -hmm. to just do it like that <laughs> that's great you know and I think you know when I now think about your second book I think it is also in a different way coming from a place of like joy. And I think yeah. gratitude, you know, like yes. just like a general, I think, gracious, joyful attitude towards life. Yes. So could you talk a little bit about your second book and, you know, maybe yes. where that one came from too? Yes. Um, and before I spin to that, mm -hmm. it, it may be worth saying again, that Dear Mommy's Boss was written 20 years ago or so, mm -hmm. but just published in 20. 21 wow. I just I just took it out of drawer and dusted it off yeah just it's so you know that it like is so relevant I, you know like that <laughs> yeah yeah it was dusted off right wow I, I said you know what this is still burning inside yeah. me so wow um so S is for street games an alphabet rhyming book so at this point I've been in the classroom for 17 years mm. and I'm happy to say that 15 of my 17 years has been in second grade. Wow. So I consider <laughs> myself a second second grade specialist. And the other two years, I'm happy to say, were looping situations. So I stayed with the class for two consecutive years. Oh. So um, I, I went from second to third on one occasion and then one to two. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I had children for two consecutive years. So, you know, the primary grades is um, my wheelhouse. So what I was noticing in recent years is, you know, same thing everybody notices. Everybody's on the iPad, the phone. <laughs> um, you know, on Mondays, you know, I usually have them write about their weekend as, you know, come in and the first thing they do is get their thoughts on the page. And I was seeing a lot of, I played Xbox. I played, <laughs> <laughs> I played, you know, Call of Duty. I played and everything, a, a lot of it was computer. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh no, just one day, one day I was sitting in the rocking chair in the classroom, listening to their little stories about the weekend. And I said, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> I said, I have to write something. 
I have to share with them some of those street games. Mm-hmm. And, um, <laughs> that's where that came from. That's a great. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> we are also attached to our devices. Not everybody, yes. but on a whole, you yes. know, we are. And for children, it's like a a very a more complex problem, mm-hmm. you know, because they're developing and it has yes. a different effect on them than it does on grownups. Yes. Um, so I really love that it celebrates like outdoor games yes. and connecting with the outside and your Absolutely. community because also like video games are very isolating it is and street games are about like connecting with the people around you and a hundred percent and you touched on a very important point that I was also thinking at the time the problem solving skills there are great deficits with that mm. you know with the younger children these days um because of what you just said, the isolation, Mm -hmm. they have their pad and she has her pad and they're side by side and nobody's talking to each other. And, you know, when it comes time to do a project and you have one bin of crayons, we're fighting over crayons because we don't have to share Mm -hmm. the pads. We don't have to share the phones, but I'm giving you a bucket of crayons that you have to share. And we're having problems with that Oh wow! because we are all so isolated, which is a great word. Mm-hmm. You're right. And the problem solving skills, you know, are, you know, suffering because of it. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Wow. That is so interesting. I did not even like think yes. about that connection because you're absolutely right. Like computer games do not encourage you to share or communicate right. or to learn to work through Right. your problems by talking to a person right, which right. ironically you know down the line will help you in the workplace too <laughs> exactly a hundred percent right so and um so I'm introducing street games some of them they may never have heard of you know games from the past like Skelly um it's an old time game but there's also a little storyline that Um, addresses the children that transition from a urban community to a suburban community. So I I wanted to put a little storyline there because that's a common phenomenon as well. Mm -hmm. You know, elementary age students um, that parents, you know, they get to a certain age and then they want to have them move to a more quiet environment and they leave the city and go to the suburbs. So there's a little story there Mm. that as well, right? Yeah, that is really nice. Yeah, because that is a a thing that a lot of kids go through. And I imagine it can be, um, you know, even if it is undertaken with their well-being in mind, it could be a huge upsetting transition, I imagine. Right. No, it it Mm -hmm. can be. Yes, exactly. You know, um, I know myself, my parents, we moved from the city to the suburbs when I was in second grade myself. So, um, yeah, so the book has a character that's reluctant to do that Mm. (laughs) Um, and a sibling that isn't reluctant to do that yeah right so um you know it hopefully will encourage them to go outside and you know they see the handball court out out there on the the playground (laughs) you know like get a handball (laughs) Get a handball, yeah. right? Because that is also, you know, besides being fun, like it's mm-hmm. so good for developing brains and your eye-hand coordination. Yes. And, you know, it's just like, you, right. yeah. And the exercise, you know, mm-hmm. we know childhood obesity is an issue. Mm-hmm. So um, hopefully that will get children to get up and move, you know, even if it's, you know, once every two weeks, if they see a game in the book, you know, yeah. let's go play that, you know. <laughs> Right. Yeah, there's so many fun ideas in there. And I think it could be also like a really fun way for parents and children to connect because so yes. many of them are games that are kind of like passed down between generations. Yes, too. yes. Mm-hmm. exactly. Exactly. I had um, someone tell me that when they read it, they said the, the next weekend they took their son out to the handball court because they she said, my husband and I used to play handball all the time mm-hmm. when we were younger. <laughs> and to, you know, not even realizing it, we never really told our son Mm -hmm. about handball. Like, but we played, you know, he didn't know how to play handball, but he should have known because his father and I always played handball. (laughs) It's such a nice thing for families to bond over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. So are you working on any more children's books or do you have plans to do future writing? Yes. So um, right now in progress, I have a book that's going to be, this one will be adult um, again. <laughs> oh my God, what do you mean? Adult, children, adult. This is going to deal with the trials and tribulations of the classroom teacher. Mm. So um, <laughs> that's in the works. And um, I expect that to uh, be published in 2024. And I, the children's book that I'm working on is going to be uh addressing girls in science Ooh. yes so um there'll be some sort of storyline there oh cool. yeah you know girls and taking on um you know mathematics and becoming a force in the science field that's so great you know because I remember specifically being told by teachers that like science wasn't for me because I was mm -hmm. a girl and that is so limiting mm -hmm. and it's just really nice that like mm -hmm. you know there's stuff that can open girls minds yes. to things that they were once told that they couldn't do yes so. exactly mm -hmm. right so um I am working on both of those and hopefully a 24 release on that as well great yes well I hope that you'll consider coming back to the show in 2024 then to talk about your new books because yes. um it was a pleasure to talk to you now and I'm you know yes. thank you so much for stopping by the show oh thank you for having me it was a pleasure <laughs> you're so welcome um okay listeners uh if you check out the show notes for this episode We'll put in some links where you can get these books and learn more about them. Please check them out. They are absolutely delightful. Thanks so much for joining us. And it is time to close this chapter. It's time to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Join us for the next episode.